If you want to supersize your super soldiers, then look no further than the Primaris Intercessors. Today, we discuss this unit on Let's Talk Tactics. Anvil of War! Let's Talk Tactics! Hey guys, and welcome back to Anvil of War Gaming. Today, we are talking about the Primaris Intercessors on Let's Talk Tactics. Before I get into the video, just wanna do a quick reminder to you guys, if you're enjoying our content, hit that subscribe button, let us know you're enjoying it, and we'll continue to make more videos. Uh, also want to do a quick shout out to our sponsors over at Red Dragon in Orleans, Ontario. Uh, check out their web store. There's a link in the video description below, and you can support us by supporting them. Now, let's get into the Primaris Intercessors. Now, these guys came out a, a decent while ago now. I mean, I can't believe it's been this long, but uh, I begrudgingly was resistant to uh, the Primaris side of the uh, the Space Marine collection when it first launched. I thought it was, uh, it was a little weird to me just that they were taking super soldiers and making better super soldiers. Um, but I understand the whole kind of concept before behind it. I think there was a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of push from players to see the, the the proper scale of Marines, but at the same time, they didn't want to just kind of discontinue the original line, uh, leaving tons of players very salty about that, I'm sure. So they decided to release the Primaris and the, the lore behind it. Now, uh, when these guys hit the tabletop, they're coming in with a solid stat line as a troop choice for the Space Marine uh, faction and they come in with a movement of six inches weapon skill ballistic skill three plus uh, strength of four toughness four two wounds two attacks a leadership of seven and a three plus save now the sergeant gets an additional attack and a, an additional point of leadership bringing up to leadership eight pretty solid um, the troops themselves come stock with bolt rifles now the bolt rifle is a strength four weapon ap minus one uh damage one at 30 inch range which is pretty solid um it's also a rapid fire weapon which means uh, they're benefiting from the bolter discipline they're also uh i mean regularly rapid firing at 15 inches which is is nothing to scoff at now these weapons can be swapped out and you can take the auto bolt rifle which is a assault three variant of a bolter uh it's strength four ap zero damage one and it has a 24 inch range now a, a consistent three shots at 24 inch range is pretty solid no ap on it but i mean you're going to get that from other uh combinations in your army including combat doctrines um then you have the stalker rifle, uh, stalker bolt rifle, which is the heavy one, strength four, AP minus two, damage two, 36 inch range weapon. Now, long distance, damage two, I mean, it's a single shot, heavy, so you have to factor that in, but it is a good choice depending on your list and uh, what you need uh, them to do. So from there, we have the, um, the sergeant who can equip a hand flamer uh, he can have a plasma pistol he can swap out his melee options he can have a uh, power sword a chain sword uh, a stardius chain sword i should mention um, he can have a uh, i don't know if i said power fist yet but uh, and he can have a thunder hammer now these are pretty solid melee options uh, i think that keeping these guys cheap is the way to go personally but I digress. Um, one in every five models can also take the Astartes grenade launcher. Now this thing has two profiles and you have to choose which one, but it also it's in addition to his bolt rifle. It straps on the bottom of it. So he can continue to fire his regular weapon in addition to this. Now, uh, the two profiles, you have an assault D6, strength three, AP zero, damage one at 30 inch range kind of shows that it complements that uh, the bolt rifles just because of the range uh, uh, synergy there. But they also have the Assault 1, Strength 6, AP-1, D3, 30-inch setting, which is uh, just kind of the way to just provide a little bit more punch. Now, if you're taking a five-man squad, there's no reason not to take this, I think, personally. I think it's a solid, solid choice, uh, and it's pretty cheap for points value, so... Uh, it's definitely something to look at, and I mean, if you're taking a 10-man squad, taking two, why not benefit from uh, having the numbers and, and having those weapons? So, go, moving on from there, we're going to get into uh, sort of their um, 
their synergies. Now, these guys are a core choice. They have the core uh, keyword. They also have the infantry keyword. So you're going to benefit a lot from auras. So you're looking at captains nearby, giving them that reroll uh, to their hits, the, the ones to hit. You're looking at lieutenants or lieutenants, uh, giving them their reroll ones to their wound rolls, which is pretty solid as well. Then you have guys like... Um, the well you have different specific characters that are obvi obviously going to buff your guys up um if they're from the specific chapters if they're named characters but you're also looking at chaplains and they're being able to chant and some of those litanies uh, are really beneficial to um increasing your wound rolls and things like that uh for your shooting attacks so it's definitely worthwhile to look at them if you're looking at like sort of a gun line army now these guys are a troop choice and uh they're they're kind of meant to be running up to the tabletop and holding objectives or maybe even camping in the backfield on your objectives um just being core they're they're good for that uh um Sorry, not just core. I mean, they're being a uh, troop choice. They're they're good for that. So it's a good idea to um, to use them for that. Now, don't I wouldn't necessarily personally. I wouldn't put all my points eggs in that one basket um, of just filling up all my troops with tons and tons of these guys. But small five man squads are great for holding objectives. Um, and I mean, personally, playing a Salamander's list, I'd like to throw only five on the tabletop just because I like to benefit from that unit's uh, getting that reroll the wound and, and those things. So um, that single reroll the wound. So, yeah, it really depends on what chapter you're running. Now, we're not going to go too far down the uh, what chapter is best for these guys rabbit hole. We will discuss, I'll give my personal opinion. But guys, feel free. If you guys think of a really nasty combo and I miss talking about it today, uh, comment below and share your uh, share your strategies, so to speak, with uh, with the community. And let's, uh, let's really kind of brainstorm how to get the most out of these guys on the tabletop. Now... Um, as far as stratagems are concerned, I mean, you have your obvious ones that are going to help these guys. Um, you have the ability to use something like um, transhuman physiology. I mean, depending on the squad size, again, it's either going to be one or two command points. But making these guys only able to be wound on a four plus is, is pretty solid, um, especially if they're taking a lot of fire and they're holding that really crucial objective. You might want to contemplate popping that stratagem um, on them. Now, obviously, if you have a meteor target that's about to get lit up so to speak like a squad of aggressors or something like that you might want to save that stratagem for them but um yeah it's, it's more of a situational thing um there's gene rot might one command point sixes are auto wounding in melee combat these guys do have two attacks apiece they're not as um punchy as assault intercessors are with their chain swords but that doesn't change the fact that when they get locked in combat you might want to pop that stratagem to give them that uh, sixes auto wounding if they're fighting something big especially if you have a 10 man squad i mean um the potential is uh, increased greatly so um from there you have death, like situational death to the traitors for one command point it's only versus heretic astartes not demons just heretic astartes specifically but you're re-rolling your melee hits in combat so if you get them stuck in it's kind of worth doing you also have uncompromising uncompromising fire two command points um it doesn't fail the action that they're completing and uh they can still shoot which is pretty solid i think that's a really good uh potential uh stratagem situational stratagem um you also have the uh, the rapid fire for two command points to shoot again that's really good uh again on a two or on a 10 man squad you can see where that gets a little uh, little crazy now as far as getting into um sort of chapter tactics again as i mentioned before the size of the unit is really going to um depend on which chapter you're running i mean if you're running imperial fists the craziness that you can get the the crazy shenanigans you can get up to with running a 10 man squad um, I shouldn't just say Imperial Fists if you're running their successors as well, but being able to run a 10-man squad on the tabletop, the amount of DACA that you can pump out is crazy. You might actually look at the Auto Bolt Rifle variant as an option just with the multitude of shots that you can pump out. I mean, firing these guys three shots apiece times 10, 30 shots, and then you pop the stratagem to shoot again, 
they're now shooting <laughs> 60 shots. Um, those sixes are exploding into additional hits. You don't even have to roll them um, on modified. So it's really important to remember that in the, the new codex or newer codex. But still, you can see where this gets a little crazy. So um, Imperial Fists, I think, are probably going to be the biggest benefactor of this squad, period. I think uh, they just... Um, they just mesh really well with their synergies. There are some great stratagems out there with other uh, with other armies uh, or other uh, chapter tactics, but I mean, I just don't see myself personally running these guys in a Space Wolf list just because I think, um, I'm not saying don't do it, I just think that, I mean, if you're gonna go melee focused chapter, you have Assault Intercessors, you have that option. It's something that you, might want to contemplate uh, i mean maybe one squad in the backfield again camping objective something like that but uh with salamanders i mean they fill uh two out of my three core choices i do take the assault intercessors for my primary specific uh portion of my collection um whenever i'm running that on the table i, I think that uh i think assault intercessors are good have a good spot depending on the chapter. Uh, and I think the regular intercessors have a really good spot in most chapters. Um, and again, it just matters. I mean, your, your, your preference is going to be focused on your list building. And, uh, and I mean, the stalker bolt rifles, there's some really cool shenanigans you get up to with, uh, with death watch that can really buff out those, uh, those stalker bolt rifles. So you might take a 10 man squad, um, in a death watch list. Um, yeah, but I mean, if you're running something like Blood Angels with a chapter tactic that's kind of more melee oriented, you might not. So yeah, just let let me know though, guys. If you uh, you are running Blood Angels and you are running Intercessors and you have an extremely cool way of doing that uh, or, or something that's really working for you, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Um, I think overall these guys are great on the tabletop for what they are meant to do, which is be a core infantry, uh, troop infantry run up the table, hold objectives, shoot some shots at the enemy, um, hail of fire and glory for all your Space Marine chapters. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. We hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for more Space Marine content. Sponsored by... <laughs>